Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Brothers and sisters and children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I should have done this at the beginning, but I wasn't the one who set up the program, and that is to welcome all of you to this center, which is the Islamic Society of York Region. And I'm very glad and I'm grateful for um, uh, the SIRA conference to our SIRA education or SIRA foundation to organize this uh, program. Obviously, it's uh, extremely important for parents to be concerned about their children's well being. Uh, many of us were not born here, although our next generation and the generations of third generation, I'm a grandparent now. I have my own children were born here, my grandchildren are born here. So this is a very, very uh, serious issue for all of us. And there are many challenges that our uh, children face, as well as parents. And I'm glad that um, uh, Phil gave a very, very comprehensive uh, presentation regarding the challenges, as well as uh, what can be done to ameliorate some of the negative consequences of uh, what is happening in the public school system. In fact, even Catholic schools are not um, exempt from it. There have been many, many instances. In fact, in some Catholic schools, there was a case last year in October of 2022 uh, in a school close to Ottawa where this issue came up in the school uh, regarding uh, gender identity and students were invited to express their views and opinions quite openly and one student, Chris Alexander, 16 year old, now he's 17 um, he raised the point and it's, it's a Catholic school and he said that well we are born either a male or a female so there is no other gender that, that we have and he was actually suspended from school for saying that. Now to the best of my knowledge, I'm a parent and a grandparent. When my kids were born in the hospital, they identified them as male or female. I'm not aware of any other gender identity that they carry, nor with my grandkids. And I'm sure that there isn't any other gender identity that they can mention when a child is born. So we are given this ludicrous notion that now you can feel something else. That you can feel that one day you are male and the other day you are a female. And what this has led to in schools is that in many schools, girls do not use the school washrooms because boys are going in there because the boys are saying they feel like girls today. And you can imagine the, the consequences of boys going in there and the, 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 the kinds of uh, things that can happen over there. So imagine the girls' rights are being violated, that they are there for, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and they are not able to use the uh, school washrooms because they are terrified of boys coming in over there. So these are some of the challenges that uh, students are facing. Now, when we talk about this concept of feeling, suppose I get up tomorrow morning and I say that I feel like a robber or I feel like a killer. Then they say that you can feel whatever you like. So, okay, I feel like a robber or a killer. And then I go and actually perpetrate that act. Would that be acceptable in society? I mean, you have to give me a, I don't know why, why they think that we don't have any brains. That we can be driven by the, by the, through this, this path and, and whatever agenda that they are pursuing. We as Muslims take our teachings from the Noble Quran and from the prophetic Sunnah and Sirah. And the Quran tells us very clearly Ya ayyuhun nas inna khalaqnakum in bakarin wa unsa wa jahalnakum shukumun wa kaba'ila li ta'arafu. Allah says very clearly that, O mankind, O humanity, I have created you from a single male and a single female. 
and then spread you into communities and tribes and nations, etc., so that you may recognize each other. And so now we have been told that there are other identities, this um, gender soup, alphabetical soup that they have created, LGBTQ, whatever they call it, and we are called upon to accept it. In fact, even the Prime Minister was asked recently by one Muslim parent about this whole issue, and I'm, I was astonished by the response that he gave. He said that I think Muslims should be careful not to be influenced by Fox News. And if I had been there, I would have said, excuse me, Mr. Prime Minister, you think we are fools? You think we only watch Fox News? In fact, I haven't watched Fox News for decades. What are you talking about? Get real, man. This is not Fox News nonsense. This is our book that teaches us. Not Fox News. We're not going to accept your damn agenda that you're, you're trying to impose upon us. But brothers and sisters, we are gathered here, we need to talk about the solutions to these problems. We can talk about the problems. In fact, before I proceed, I also want to just add one other point. Phil mentioned that the Canadian Parliament passed a bill uh, allowing same-sex marriage in 2005. In 1999, the same Parliament had debated this issue and it concluded that marriage can be only between a man and a woman. In 1999. So within six years, I don't know what happened and how they were able to influence the Canadian Parliament to say, well, now marriage can be between a, a, a you know, marriage is permissible between the same sex, between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. Sometimes I wonder, you know, Canada is already, and the whole of, in fact, the Western world is not able to replenish their population. So how are they going to keep up with the declining population? People are now dying, they're not able to produce enough children, and if they have sex, same-sex marriages, obviously the population is going to decline further. And so are they going to say then that you're not going to import people from outside, but if you are pushing, pushing the same-sex agenda, then you're saying, okay, we're not going to get um, you know, heterosexuals, we are only going to get homosexuals. I mean, this is where they are leading this whole thing to. How are they going to survive? Why are they adopting an, an, a lemmings type of attitude that they want to destroy the whole society? I really have not been able to figure out. I've been thinking about it. I've lived in this country for 50 years. I came as a young man, qualified from the best universities in Britain when I came here. And Alhamdulillah, we have been able to develop the center like this. We're going to develop other things over here. But I haven't been able to figure out what is it that they're trying to get at? Where are they heading for? What is, the, what is it that they want to achieve? Just imagine if everybody were gay or lesbian. What's going to happen to this society? Unfortunately, we cannot isolate ourselves from this society. We live here. We came here. We made a choice. But we have to find solutions to these problems. And Phil has given excellent solutions. I think we should pursue those. But at the same time, I think we also need to, as parents, need to be first of all aware of what the challenges are. And number two, as again Phil mentioned, not to give an emotional response. We as Muslims often tend to be emotional in our responses. I think we need to give a reasoned response. It has to be done at the intellectual level, it has to be done at a proper level, so that we engage them in proper debate. Very often, as Muslims, we shy away from these things. I think we should not. We have no choice but to engage the teachers, the principals, the school boards, in a reasoned way, in a responsible way, and bring these suggestions to them. In the meantime, it is imperative that we establish Islamic schools. It's not easy. We've been struggling with this for years and years, but we haven't been able to. We are planning, inshallah, we develop proper Islamic schools. In the meantime, I think parents can look at the options of homeschooling or 
not all, but definitely exercising their right as a parent to opt out of the kinds of teachings that they are imposing at very young children. But this first and foremost requires awareness and it's the responsibility of all the parents to be aware of what is happening to uh, their children. We hope and pray that uh, this uh, conference will prove beneficial for your awareness and the fact that we'll be able to come up with uh, solutions to the very serious challenges that we are facing. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa